Welcome to the CDN General Assembly 2023, which is a very special event for our organization. We are celebrating this year 20 years of existence of this organization. Um, it's been 20 years since the foundation of this organization in, in North Macedonia in 2003, um, and it's been a long journey, right? The world has changed around us. We have, the people in CDN has changed. Um, and with this opportunity we wanted to use that we have, um, is that in the same room, um, on this General Assembly, it happened that we have uh, nine people who have been in the executive committee of uh, CDN. So um, I would uh, like to, we decided to use this space and go in depth about the about our network, what impact it had on our personalities, what impact we think uh, this network has on the on the people who engage, and what is our personal journey as well in this um, green ecosystem through which we step in, maybe with CDN or we continue um, in CDN. So, it is my pleasure to invite on the stage uh, Executive Committee members of CDN. So, Fatima, uh, Executive Committee member of CDN in 2018 and 19. Yes. <laughs> Luca, ex EC member 2019. <laughs> Maya, 2020. 2020, Nijat, 2021, <laughs> and we have a guest, a very good guest, let's applause the guest, Katya, 2021 and 2022, and then, and then current EC, 2022, Musine, Uh, Jena and Salma. Yes. Yes, there is no seats for me left, which is okay. <laughs> I was also EC member from 2020 and 2021 and beginning of the 2022 when I'm now working in the office as a network coordinator. So, before we jump to the uh, discussion, I wanted to um, read out something that I think is very interesting. A bit of a context. Uh, when, I, when we were getting ready for this GA, I decided to um, dig around in our archives, which we have quite big um, physical archives or digital archives, and I found this uh, text, which is called Presentation Text, and it's adopted in 2003. And this was the text that used to describe CDN, why it was founded, and what is the uh, mission that we have. So, I will read the text, and we can uh, then jump to the discussion. In previous years, cooperation between green youth organizations is in Eastern Europe was limited and mostly connected to seminars, study sessions, and so on. Idea born in spring of 2002 about gathering young greens from all over Eastern Europe under the same umbrella and support their development, political work, and cooperation was brought to light in summer first meetings, meetings of Eastern European young greens during summer seminar on sustainable development in Serbia. Enthusiasm and energy we experienced there was extraordinary. Therefore, with support of European umbrella for young European Greens and Green Forum Sweden, second meeting took place during Federative Council, which is now General Assembly, of Federation of Young European Greens. Development of independent international cooperation structure that will organize number of cooperation projects in following year turns to be central point of interest of participants. In December 2002, CDN became reality, and with support from Green Forum, we developed our communication tools and public presentation tools in January 2003, and we had met for the first time officially as a network in February 14 to 16, with high, with high hopes for future and support um, and other inter um, and support, we hope to start our activities this year and make this network fully functional. 
Um, and it mentions few countries that has been member. So following countries are involved within this process at the moment. Um, so Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia and Montenegro, Macedonia, Ukraine and Hungary aim to, is to develop contacts and involve other, other countries. Quickly the aims. The association is without commercial goals and aims. Well, promoting ecology among European young people using all available non-violent means, encouraging a realization of studies and reflections in different forms on ecology by young democratic people from all over Europe with focus on Eastern Europe, gathering young people living in different uh, Eastern European nations, re recognizing and promoting the existence of internal, regional and national differences, coordinating common actions of member organizations towards development and cooperation among young people and groups in Europe aiming to bring um, Eastern European nations closer together and promoting common green political aims on European and international level. And well, protecting uh, human rights, democracy, as well as democratic way of, way of work and minority rights. This was the text on which CDN was founded 20 years ago. A lot of things changed, uh, but the core values on which we are based remain and it's there and it will stay with us. So I would like to move on with, the, with our executive committee members throughout the years uh, with uh, a very simple question um, to, to start with, to maybe share your personal story, how you engaged in CDN um, and follow up on that, what, it ha what personal impact it had uh, on you uh, to be part of this uh, Eastern European Green uh, Network. And let's start with um, Fatima. Um, yeah, I, I got introduced to CDN in 2016. I remember um, Katya and Masha visited Azerbaijan Mill Network. It was study visit. And I remember I was like, I was like, like a kid. <laughs> I, ch I changed a lot since 2016. So it was it was really interesting just to listen to some people coming from like coming from other country, but we share the same struggles and they are dealing with the same problems in other countries. They are doing regional events, and I was like, okay, yeah, we 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 share kind of we are dealing with the same shit. So we can be really good like if we work together but the later i um uh, i uh, applied for being an ec and then what personally changed i think the biggest thing uh, beyond organizational skills and everything and everything the biggest thing was to see the power of young people like the use the participation like we can be together we can be stronger together and it was really um, that was the power of solidarity and being together to to discuss political topics together uh, have pro and con speeches like that was something really uh, powerful and promising like yeah we are young people and we have a say uh, we can talk and um, raise the topics and um, agree and disagree, but we can be still friends. Sometimes we can judge, we can criticize, and we develop together. That, that was really powerful, and it changed me a lot in my past uh, towards, um, now I am doing social sciences, and it's, I think uh, CDN also has a role on that. Luca. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, maybe it's a nice transition because actually my first CDN event was the General Assembly where Fatima got elected into the board. So it was like, yeah, this uh, nice moment. Uh, and yeah, it was one of uh, my first green events uh, and the first international event. So it was the General Assembly in Serbia. And um, you know, I was studying political science, like learning a lot about like European Union, like everything kind of west of <laughs> Croatia. And then like this general assembly was kind of a shock of realizing like, 
well, okay, this region of Eastern Europe exists as kind of like a political, uh, political community, like there are countries in this region that really share kind of common struggles. Um, and like n the movements that are fighting against like the same kind of oppressive um, uh, structures and powers, like they, they have kind of yeah, empowerment that they draw on from each other. So yeah, that was like a big impact of understanding like uh, there's this network exists first of all, <laughs> this like, common struggle exists, and then with time also understanding like uh, where can we also draw on this oppression to be like really creative in proposing like kind of unique yeah, Eastern European perspectives, um, Eastern European green perspectives. And I was working on that mostly within cities and alternative urbanization like how to use these urban spaces to promote kind of green visions in cities. Yeah, that was my experience, first experience. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, another good transition because I was in the EC 2020-2021 uh, and Luca was actually the one that inspired me to apply. He, he like gave the idea of applying and uh, before that I didn't even know CDN that much uh, except uh, one event which was years after called as the best CDN event <laughs> until we actually in the prep team we made a new <laughs> best CDN event to be remembered uh, so the, the kind of path went from uh, I, I was uh, I started out in the youth movement Revolt, uh, which uh, CDN, uh, which is a member organization of CDN, and through that I kind of got some core values and transitioned into CDN. Um, and these values that CDN had were much more uh, like I could relate to them. I could really feel them in my heart. And um, in the year uh, in which I was EC, uh, I started living them to the fullest, and it was. Uh, really empowering and inspirational to to see that there are these people who stand together and uh, like very similar to the inspiration levels as the as was mentioned before um, and throughout the years um, I have not met a single person uh, in CDN who um, who didn't get some form of uh, some form of uh, some added value to it like uh, whether it was some um, training, uh, skill-based, or education. Um, I think that the environment and the positive atmosphere in CDN really um, helped people to develop uh, into people who are safe uh, to share their opinions and their thoughts. Uh, and that also happened to me personally, because I started out as a, <laughs> as a person who literally started crying <laughs> on the first uh, hag, uh, because I was afraid that my uh, English was bad or I was too anxious to speak in the group and uh, after that it just started going upwards and uh, it was a great experience um, yeah I don't know what to say like there are different steps uh, but I believe uh, like so many things were learned along the way and uh, so many people I have seen that they were inspired by CDN and uh, I one thing that I want to say like which is uh, the best <laughs> thing that I ever heard. Um, a previous network coordinator mentioned that, that CDN is not a network that is striving for some uh, revolutionary change in Eastern Europe, but it is striving to empower young people. Uh, and this process takes a long time. And uh, we just need to be patient uh, because for me personally, it took years uh, to to really feel inspired and to, to sit <laughs> here. Uh, so years since 2018, since my first event. Um, so it's not, uh, it takes some time to have impact on individuals and uh, it really works <laughs> very strangely, but it really works like everyone who is here is now um, in some phase of their lives where they are living these values through their um, like professional engagement or um, like even personally and professionally. So yeah, that's all. So I also joined CDN in 2019. Uh, I had my first event in Istanbul, which was a network meeting before FYG General Assembly. And I came there completely randomly. I didn't know what it is. <laughs> just one person from Belarus, uh, Asia, she was just like, she just proposed me to come and said like, oh, there is some international event, you should just try. And I was like, okay, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> 
And at that moment, at the first event, I really liked to be around CDN. Uh, it was really nice to talk, especially to talk about Belarus, because like it was the space to tell the truth about my country. Because maybe you heard about Belarus from like 2020, but before that, it was also tough and situation was super horrible and still is. And it was really important to say what's happening, and I just continued to do that. I joined the prep team uh, to one of the for one of the events, uh, also in 2019. But I think for me the brightest moment was a bit later, uh, also 2019. We organized uh, a single climate strike in Belarus in Minsk uh, with another activist, uh, Veronika Yanovich. Maybe you heard of her. Um, it was, you know, to organize a climate strike in Belarus, it's something almost impossible because you can get imprisoned really easily. Um, but we did it and uh, we didn't get in prison, surprisingly. But many, like Veronica was like the main character, the main hero, <laughs> heroine uh, there. And many Belarusian media started to write about her and uh, many people, probably people who work in like structures in Belarus, I mean, police or something like that, they started to make really bad comments about her and about her health. And her family started to get super worried and uh, Veronica also started to get worried about that. And I remember that me and some other people from Belarusian and Greens, we just decided to ask people from CDN to write to Veronica to support her somehow because she was like stressed about all the situation. And I remember I was just contacting people and everyone was like super friendly and super open and everyone really wrote to her and wrote many good things. After that, she started to feel so much better and I realized that CDN is like a really huge family. And in 2020, I joined the EC, but also later uh, the mass protests began, began in Belarus. And uh, unfortunately, I personally had many horrible stories in my life. But still, like it really, it was really hard to handle this all. But I was, I'm, I'm still really thankful that I had lots of support. And I think CDN for me is about the support. Thank you. <laughs> Um, hi everybody, um, uh, I'm Nijad from Mill Network. Um, my experience started I get, in 2018 uh, when I first attended the regional meeting that was organized by Urban uh, Alternative Urbanization Group. Actually, it was a mixture of both, like a regional group and an alternative urbanization uh, program. It was in Georgia, uh, and back then I was not even involved with Mill. Uh, but through certain connections with the people from Mill, uh, I got uh, invited uh, for this event, and um, it was, um, I don't know, it was really <coughs> very eye-opening first experience, because uh, here and there I have been to certain events, and uh, I was not f ever feeling super comfortable that with the topics that are covered, so I was, uh, it was kind of, I don't know, an experience that I had, maybe okay, this is the right one, right people, this is the right place, this is the right way of approaching things. So I felt super comfortable the way uh, people discuss things and the way people approach to certain topics. And um, there was a lot of details as well, like the way you moderate sessions, the way you organize them, the way how people are just, um, you know, so respectful to each other, and then how many things are making a lot of sense, and like how there is safe space and an inclusive space for um, you know people with vulnerable backgrounds so and all that it just it was a really warm feeling um, so um, that that was my first interaction with CDN and then I loved it so much uh, that's why I, I continued my interaction maybe for a year after that I gave a break because of my studies but after I, I got a lot more engaged and got elected as an EC member in 2021 uh, it was a great experience as well. Uh, learned a, a lot about a, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, structures of an uh, international big organization, which was a great experience. Um, and then what happened after that? Also, what I want to add on a personal level, 
uh, I started to transfer this knowledge to, to uh, other organizations in my, the organization I work for, uh, which works with the queer people, uh, and then uh, literally the other events that I've been attending. Uh, I'm like, nobody introduced the, intro like the moderation rules, like nobody's doing the hand signs, and I'm, I'm, I'm introducing them, hey, you know, this is the way to do it, and I all, all this <laughs> practice the city hand because I was like, oh, it doesn't make sense now, oh, do you have any safe space <laughs> rules? Um, so also, I, I feel like a, the, knowing these structures also helped us a lot in MIL uh, and uh, as well, so that we, a lot of our work is based on the things that we learned from CDN, and I guess CDN's main purpose is also that, that it, it increases the capacities of, of its member organizations. Uh, to add more on a personal level, now I have full understanding of what Balkans means and which countries were, and, uh, uh, but jokes aside, yeah, it's, it just makes you more politically aware and politically mature. That is what's going on in the region, why these regions are separated in a certain way. Uh, it also, sometimes in our region, certain things are a bit upsetting and we don't get the best news. Uh, but also CDN taught to us, empowered us, okay, but at least uh, here's the thing you can do, maybe to stay informed about things, uh, stay more politically uh, mature about things so that the, when the time has come, we will have the capacity to act on it. Um, so that was another lovely personal experience that I got from CDN. Uh, what else I can say, I, I, I personally met a lot of lovely people and then made a lot of lovely connections, which is also cute. Um, yeah, and that's it. And I'll pass the word to Lucina. Thank you for so many amazing stories. Um, yeah, my story is also kind of personal. Um, my journey with CDN started back in 2018, actually with the same uh, event with Maya in um, uh, Istanbul. That was lovely and um, I'm gonna say at the moment I was already involved locally into, do, into activism as a peace um, activist and also human rights defender, but I never ever heard about green uh, you know, movement, I didn't have enough knowledge and also didn't know people who are, were coming from that movement. And CDN was my first experience. And um, well, that was a, a basically the first um, click that I uh, understood that all the um, talks and topics of peace, uh, feminism and green, they are super intertwined and you cannot separate them really. And um, actually, uh, a year before, uh, I was one of the co-founders of the currently EMO, member organization of Frontline Youth Network. And I'm gonna say that Frontline learned a lot from CDN, structure-wise. Um, and now, um, it required me five years, actually, to be back to CDN and then reshare the knowledge that I learned first from CDN, adopted it, tried, experimented a lot, and then uh, kind of returned back with some of more local context. Now I feel happy um, to, do, to have this, you know, mutual knowledge uh, sharing experience. And um, yeah, I should also probably remember the first person that uh, actually talked about, uh, shared about the, this amazing platform, which was my, um, well, group mate uh, while studying in human rights, uh, Panina from Georgia. And uh, that is what CDN is about, connecting people, like-minded people, and creating this international solidarity. And uh, if it was not 2018, April, the time when Armenia went into the revolution, probably I wouldn't be that empowered by CDN because that, that was the time when we um, crafted nice posters in solidarity uh, to Armenia and that, uh, that small, actually, you know, um, small um, poster could empower me to continue with my international activism. And now, um, throughout the years, having ups and downs, I see that this solidarity means a lot and it can actually change both like personal lives and experiences of people, but also uh, make more political influences in uh, our local context. Yeah, thank you very much for this amazing exp experience. Uh, 
so uh, I'm Selma, I'm from uh, protests in Latvia and I'm also uh, the um, member of the outgoing executive committee now. Uh, I first joined uh, the Greens uh, as uh, I joined protests, which is our young green organization in Latvia in 2019. And then uh, Justice, who you might, some of you might know, who is uh, now a member of Riga City Council. She uh, inspired me to go to my first uh, CDN event, which was in 2019 in Tuzla. And uh, I instantly loved it. I just thought it was so amazing that you could see all these people, all these young people from other Eastern European countries that have their own different perspectives, but that, that share the same values as me. And uh, then very quickly after that, I also joined my first uh, prep team. Uh, but then the pandemic happened and uh, we had to move everything online, which was, uh, of course, very hard and bad. And it was our first time experiencing that, which is, seems quite unimaginable now that we have accustomed to like doing, I don't know, half of everything online. Uh, but uh, that also, uh, I, I guess that played a big role in uh, protests becoming more involved in CDN because in a way it was more accessible that every, everything was now online and you could join first online and then go to your first live event and it kind of felt more, less scary. And then uh, I became an EC member in 2021 and then I uh, had my second mandate, which is finishing now. But I think the, the biggest thing that CDN kind of inspired me to do was uh, to take my activism and involvement in progressives, which is our protest mother party in Latvia, to the next level because uh, also being being a part of CDN, you can see that like not only to live in a in a like quite democratic country is a privilege. It's also like never guaranteed that if you have this if you have this opportunity to run in democratic elections, that you have have this opportunity to vote, have the opportunity that you can go to protests and you can strike and you won't be arrested. Then you have to you have to like use it because otherwise it, it can always be taken away from you just because you have it doesn't mean that it's going to stay and uh this this was also one of the biggest things that inspired me to run for parliament N last year i didn't get in but i got almost elected which i yeah i thought i didn't think that i would get such a good result and uh it made me very happy and it also showed me that young people really uh, have an opportunity to to also run and to um to make our voices heard even in Eastern Europe and that we should always use this opportunity not only not only to make ourselves heard but also to empower the next ones who for whom it's good, so that it's for easier for them and than it was for us and I think this is always something that we need to look at this not only as a kind of linear, linear uh, journey but that we are setting these foundations so in order for like the, the next generation also of CDN to come and the next generation of uh, young green activists, we are, for them, they will have like much, much better sort of ingredients to work with. So for example, we can see uh, what Gio presented from 2003, like these things kind of seem very basic to us now, but, and maybe a little bit like outdated, but without them, we would have never like made it to where we are now. So I think, I think also to set these like small stones of progress is very, very important. So my journey with the CDN started from Belarus, and like it's interesting that my like uh, whole my another part of my uh, CDN experience was also connected, uh, surprisingly, with Belarus, but <laughs> not through. So. It was event about uh, cities and urbanism, what I, I was very into, like still, and it it gave me so much like new information about wow, here is like pe people from Moldova. It it was this not existing anymore ramp um, region, and something new. So I met these uh, young people. Uh, and had a possibility to talk to them and it was so like for me it was very very inspirable and something very new and especially then uh, you're returning home and some people trying okay like um, you should be engaged more and more and more and people started to motivate to join and you, you feel some kind that you are 
valuable as a person, as a person who can share it experience, and you are so encouraged to continue to do it. And like, I think it is very important to young person to feel this kind of um, importance and your values, even despite you are li young, not so experienced, you are not uh, well-known politicians or something like this, but you are just from nowhere, but people, wow, <laughs> you're interesting, can be. And Sidians <laughs> also, uh, also gave me such a very exciting experience that I I believe I will never get it uh, without it uh, like spy uh, K uh, KGB spying in Belarus or like uh, uh, tear and gas on the Istanbul women's march and like something wow I so some of it I, I even uh, still uh, like did not tell it to my mom because it will be too very scary but I will <laughs> alright and um, yeah, what about Belarus? So my first event was from Belarusian Greens, and I met uh, this this uh, very nice people. And uh, oh. <laughs> interrupted <laughs> discussion for so many times, and I was nominated uh, these two times uh, for my mandate by Belarusian Greens and. Like I'm happy that uh, they gave me a possibility to be a representative of this administrative body too, and um, also like my even the political interest uh, started to be very connected to Belarus. Thank you to CDN and, and thank you so this uh, good uh, communication and friendship established uh, through this and. What I also wanted to share that um, from my first event, it was um, like just because it was from Trump, it was um, held in Russian. So, but uh, the next event it uh, was in English, and it also helped me to integrate on in this international community more by learning a new language. I remember that I was so shy and I I, I was so scared and afraid to to speak to other people. I just okay, I am observer, but now I feel so free. I mean, how Katya you could even like be afraid to speak in these people, but it, it also what it's very important, especially for um just from eastern europe to have this possibility to not only to receive this intercultural experience but also to train your own skills your soft skills um except uh, like this not only English language, but also well, here, as for example, for General Assembly, we have a good possibility to practice election. We have a good practice to discuss in amendments, to debate something, to to be elected, for example, to to have uh, to hold this some kind of lobbying campaign of advocated for some changes and it, it's very nice that we have this like I, I wish in a few years we will have so like a harsh debate on the issues and it, it will be very great even if we will have a different opinions but it will be like we will have opinions it's already a good start so we are not uh, so like um, in different people, uh, so it it is good place for training, for learning, for uh, speaking, for communication with people, to get new friends, to receive this uh, unforgettable experience that <laughs> you sh can avoid in your countries, for example. Yeah, I think. <laughs> that's all. I think now, like. I just just understood it. Like my way in CDN started when I became vegetarian, because like I started thinking like, oh, there are some other things that may like may help me live not that not that capitalistic life. Because I was studying international economics and everyone was like, oh, you should establish your business and do this big company and become this very good businessman or businesswoman and like do do things and like uh, develop every time and like do whatever. And I was like, oh. But like, is it the way? Is it really a way for like? Is it not really sustainable? But is it 
Im that important to develop every time we are cooperation and development but it's different development <laughs> uh, so basically my first event uh, I guess it was uh, with green use of Ukraine and it was event on policies politics and ecology and I learned many different things from there and then uh, people just said oh we have CDN you know the CDN CDN they will have GA you go and I was like what is CDN what is GA what should I do it was 2020 it was the year when no 2021 it was the year when uh, Selma Katya and Nijet were elected and I was like okay I will join it online it was COVID no one no, like nothing was working uh, I had bad internet I had like to study I have some sessions and I was like okay I will join everything and just like meh 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 but like, it was interesting because so many people with so many different opinions and I like really started getting more interested in it. And then my first live event was a uh, mm, prep team for RAMP regional meeting. It was in Moldova and I've met so many people and I was like, oh, the atmosphere during events and during cooperation with people can be that good like that that it, it, it can be that easy to like discuss anything you want it like people can be that acceptable and that inclusive and like it changed my approach to understanding how to communicate with people so thank you CDN for this and thank you all people for this uh, I think that's it and I oh no yes thank you <laughs> uh, okay now I'm moderating the session, but I also was in the executive committee of CDN with the uh, first time elected with Spoil in 2020, and then also in 2021 I was a um, member of the EC. But how everything started, I mean, everything started from the beginning uh, when I joined the Georgian Young Greens, when I was already a bit involved with, uh, with workers' rights and the social justice and the queer issues and the feminism and, and um, cultural protection and the environment and all the, all the things. And I noticed that mm, nowhere really these issues come together because I believe that, I believe that, I mean, they're very interconnected. And then there was Young Greens of Georgia, just very few people there at, at, the, at that time. Um, and I got to know them and I was like, I mean, yeah, I, I like it here. Um, it was inclusive, it was open, it was uh, equal, it was welcoming, and I joined there. And through there, I ended up on being on a CDN event. There's one CDN event I almost ended up, that, and that would have been my first CDN event that you mentioned, which happened in Georgia about the urban issues, but then I was on a late on a deadline, and I thought I would not be, I couldn't apply anymore, which probably I could not, but, but then there was my first event was actually same same year or next year in 2019. Um, it was a regional Kaukasus regional meeting, uh, which was um, happening in, in in Georgia. At the time, I had already been to to Young European Greens event. I knew FIG and um, and I loved it. I was like, yeah, amazing to be here. But then on on most of the discussion, I was like. Okay, it's inspirational, it's empowering, but I'm like, yeah, that things don't really work like that at, in my home country, you know? Like, you can run for elections, yeah, Georgia is more or less a democracy, but then there's a lot of issues you're gonna face, you know, if you run for elections. Like, if you're a politician or, there's many issues that are very different from, from the West of uh, Europe, and importantly, yeah, institutions are not really there right in at least in my home country so i was like yeah amazing i'm empowered but i i i couldn't fully relate to it and then i ended up on a cdn event which was yeah in georgia um of course the people it was i felt like home you know, i felt like family it's people from all around i mean those people from caucasus uh, which is all around uh, um people from my, my region which i had not really met before you know like i I had a bit of an idea about Turkey, about Armenia, about Azerbaijan, but you know, not not really. You know, like um, it's like they exist, I, and they're cool people, our neighbors. I don't know much, and then through that, I I really got to know the the political context and the people and what they do, um, and that part was very important. But what was what really even today is shaping and has shaped my political self, I would say, 
is um, one very simple session. There was a session um, made by, um, okay, there was two sessions. One was made by Vesna, who, was, who is with us actually for this uh, J, not right, not right now. Um, uh, Vesna had super session as usually. Um, and it was about how democracy works in Eastern Europe. Um, so, and the session was like, mainly about how our political system usually works. You know, we have this experience of some kind of authoritarian regime in a very close past, like Soviet Union or, or some other. Um, and our politics is mostly about majorities. Like, you have power if you're in majority. And we were talking about that, uh, and then we were talking about the how, from the green perspective, that's not really working, right? Um, most of the issues that we advocate ad advocate for cannot really find majority today, like um, LGBT rights, for example, or feminism, or, or even sometimes environmental protection. Like we cannot really get the majority right now though we usually do some years later. Um, and then we were talking about the strategy, how that is, how we have to change that in, in, um, in Eastern Europe and how, how to think about politics through not the perspective of, yeah, we need to get majority today, but from a perspective of, yeah, I'm, I have these values, I'm this, um, this is my beliefs, and now let's build the coalitions. And this is what really I, I learned in CDN personally, to, to accept other opinions, to compromise when it's needed, and mainly to build coalitions uh, when, whenever it's needed. And the end of the, end of the session um, was um, this using this non-formal educational method uh, when we had to um, create a policy platform or some policy paper or political manifest, manifest, yeah? Man political manifest, we were divided in groups and we had to, we were given some priorities and each individual priorities and then we had to find the compromise, you know? And this is where I really learned how, how that works. Like how, how, how to compromise, how to communicate, how to make sure all of the voices are heard um, and at the same time we find the, find the ground where all of us agree. And that, was, that played a huge, huge role where I stand today. So, um, and then being in DC, of course, it's, it's, it's been a journey. Uh, and um, I have been interested in politics even before, but now I would say I know way more uh, on most of the countries that are in Eastern Europe, if not all. And I know not, not just new sources, you know, which, which is a completely different thing when you know some random website article and then when you know what people tell you. Um, and that, that is something that is very valuable. And that just generally the people, I mean, you mentioned that it, it felt like family to me and it feels like family to me. We might disagree time to time, we might not find the common ground time to time, but that's, that's the reality. Local context shapes us and then we come from a different backgrounds, um, from a different professions, different viewpoints, but at the end of the day, there are things we, we agree on and we stand together, we fight together, and we have seen that. We have seen CDN solidarity and the people solidarity in, in many, many contexts. So that is valuable. And the people, and I will finish with that, uh, the people CDN, let's say, raises in a way, you know, like you join and you're a diff rises, rises. I'm not a native English speaker and none, none of us are. And this is another great thing about CDN that most of us are not native speakers <coughs> and we invent English words we, and we find, we, we don't speak perfect and we don't have to sp per speak perfect English, but we don't understand each other at the, the end of the day. So let's invent words, let's pronounce it the way we want it. So, um, and yeah, the, CDN really raises, r raises people, uh, and you have now people who have been in CDNEC, like right now, right here, and we have the whole generation, you know, like we're talking about, I think almost 100 people who have been in CDNEC last, last 20 years, and in the, in the, in the office, um, and these people are in a different places, but they, they are still connected to, the, to, this, to, to each other with this link and the shared values that, um, that connects us. So that is something um, truly amazing, and it truly is each pe person's contribution. 
each EC member's contribution, each uh, working group member's contribution, each office member contribution, and it, even each participant's and prep team's uh, contribution to where we stand today and how we will stand in the next uh, 20 years. So I'm really grateful that I ended up in CDN and I'm still here uh, right now. So, yeah. <laughs> Yes, and now um, I thought to ask a question, but I think it it would be nice to more have a less asking a question, but more like a free space. And uh, have also from the participant side, if you feel like having a question, uh, the, f the, the, the floor will be yours. I can just say what I would want to ask, but feel free to address that or all feel free to talk on something else that you feel like is very important while we are discussing CDN, our 20 years, this transformation that we, we went through, right? CDN is a, we are still on the same values, but we are a different organization in a number of ways than we were 20 years ago, than we were 15 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, and even two and a year ago at some point, you know? Uh, we constantly grow and we tra constantly transform. So my question would be, um, what, what do you think the, the impact the CDN has on people, uh, people who engage, people who just come on one event? Um, what, what is impact that CDN is having on, um, yeah, on people? And you can also touch this transformation that we are going and uh, maybe a few words about the future you would like to see. Uh, in, uh, in CDN. Yes, and we have amazing volunteers. Bo. Yeah, I would uh, tell about my personal experience, I guess. Um, I think Zhenichka already talked about um, CDN events, that we come here and we can talk about any topic completely freely. But I would also say uh, not only about talking, but about the way you express yourself, because um, I was having some mental issues and also I'm a woman and I have to fight for myself a lot. So I had lots of struggles in my life because of that. But when I came to CDN events, I realized that actually many things can be accepted in myself because people around also accepted this in themselves. It just gave me the possibility to feel free, to feel much better, uh, to be myself. <laughs> and to fight, fight for better. Also, I'm really thankful, I think, to Masha, <laughs> who was the previous project coordinator. Uh, I think she was the one who taught me a lot. Uh, also with expressing myself, with being a woman, with fighting. <laughs> yeah. Can I go next? Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, CDN's impact on people. Um, I would say from our geography, like um, especially from Azerbaijan and some other countries as well, um, sometimes it gets really tough and depressing, um, especially the, because of the politics of the country. And sometimes it gets really tough to find hope for anything. Um, I feel like CDN had really positive impact on that, that at least people were able to share this space. Um, at least to address their struggles openly without any restriction or oppression. And it was like, I remember there were some times that I was down or like some people from me were down and then a CDN event truly helped like just to restore the hope, to restore the uh, will to continue the work we do. Um, so it's like a safe um, platform, encouraging platform and that's the way it's affecting people. Uh, for me in one sense mm, in a second sense um, yeah at least we're not able to vote in our countries but we're able to vote in meal uh, I mean in the CDN so it's also why um, so it's also a good experience um, so <coughs> you know at least that's also an impact that we're actually learning how this political process is supposed to go and then how it's happening in real life and how it what is the reality uh, of fair politics that we never experienced in our own context for now. Uh, but yeah, hopes are good for the future. And then I'm passing the word to next volunteer, which is Lucine.
Um, well, I love to say that once you care, there is no way back. And basically, CDN probably makes people care about more than they usually care about. And also, it uh, helped me and also probably many more young, dynamic people who are motivated enough to change the world um, to see the bigger picture, to zoom out from their local context and see what is happening around and to care more and, um, yeah, basically to get empowered more, to be more influential. Um, yeah, that's it. And I wish us um, good luck with our like um, planet saving mission. Okay, I can continue. Uh, for me, uh, like, yes, everything that was said so far, but I also want to add up the, the amount of skills and like technicalities that we get to use in our daily lives, especially as a member of EC. Like, uh, you basically see this, what, what you see in the General Assembly, just in, uh, well, on a weekly basis uh, to be a member of EC and to participate in some processes that CDN does, like uh, prep teams and so on. It's very engaging. Uh, so I would just like to, to give attention to this skill, um, skills and kind of competences even that we get uh, in terms of, um, like lobbying, uh, activism methods, non-formal education. Um, I think uh, uh, for Luca, <laughs> I can maybe mention that this summer we were uh, trainers on an event. And I, I'm pretty sure that most of the things that were said on that training as, um, as a trainer uh, were actually from CDN that gave us the resources to, to kind of engage in our own creativity to, to find some new ways how to how to be an activist and how to do things. Um, and yeah, this uh, public speaking, as I mentioned my first hag, <laughs> that was really shocking. Uh, like, um, and I can see some examples here, like of people who have spoken up and found their voice. Um, and CDN is really a safe space enough to, to do that. Like, it takes some time for some people. It took some time for me, uh, but in the end you really find your voice on the and you clarify your stance on things through CDN and it's supportive and loving and uh, yeah there are challenges not gonna lie um, but challenges are everywhere and uh, it's like a, a good enough environment like the best environment to overcome these challenges together so yeah Yeah, I think that um, when you're a participant who comes for the first time and maybe only time to a CDN event, yeah, it seems like it's uh, a lot of people's kind of motivations might be like, yeah, your friend uh, or someone who you know tells you like, ah, you should really go to this event without you really knowing what it is, uh, like what's a GA, like someone mentioned, <laughs> or like what CDN is, but like you think, ah, this is a nice country, Istanbul is quite sunny uh, in June, why don't I go there? Uh, but then you kind of get like this shock therapy of uh, like, yeah, being very exposed to, for example, in group discussions, understanding like, ah, it's uh, actually quite, exclusive uh, NGT if only men are speaking, which uh, happens a lot in many other events. And then you come to a CDN event and you realize like, ah, okay, there's a, there's a gender power dynamic in any group. Or like you discuss further and further and you realize uh, people who come from different countries uh, like actually have very different privileges. Like some people in this network can't vote and I don't live in functional democracies. Most of us don't live in functional democracies. And like, okay, you're very in a very privileged position. Like all of these things you can kind of realize very quickly. And at the end of the day, somehow, yeah, some stereotypes that you have and that you aren't aware of, you realize that they exist in your mind when you start uh, yeah, communicating and like not necessarily even discussing, but like drinking a beer with a person from another country. So I think like th the transform these transformative experiences c start already with the first event that you go to. And then the longer that you're involved with this network, the more awareness you develop on yeah, intersectionality of different topics, types of oppression and like how this green ideology ties it all together. Um, yeah, yeah, and that's quite 
uniform. And then I was thinking about one thing that's quite like transformative about CDN. A lot of people, I think, who are like sitting here also don't really live in their countries anymore. And uh, like, yeah, when you think about CDN, which kind of started out as yeah this idea of like empowering young people, and it does do that 100 percent. And like I see it also with people around me who I've been involved with around CDN who really became like confident speakers, like uh, really know their shit when it comes to uh, like uh, different topics and like are also transferring this knowledge. Like CDN does transform people, but then sometimes these people are just are forced to get dislodged from their local contexts. And still outside of your local context, like I feel like CDN gives you this feeling of uh, like safety and belonging in something, even if you, yeah, get totally thrown out of where you belong, you still like belong in this network. This was a bit cheesy, but it's the truth. <laughs> I just wanted to add uh, to Luca's uh, speech. Uh, I just realized that actually CDN saved my life. <laughs> Mm, yeah, I, I'm the one who doesn't live in my country anymore. I didn't want to leave. I had to leave because I understood that it's really unsafe for me to stay there, to stay in Belarus. And uh, actually, thanks to CDN, I met people from Latvia who started to say me like, oh, you can come to our country. And like they started to explain how to do many things. Selma, Dainis, thank you a lot. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, in a few months I actually left. I applied for refugee status, I applied for asylum. And if not you, I would definitely be in prison right now. And like just a few months more and like KGB came to my flat in Minsk. So yeah, and I'm really happy. Like I, I'm thinking a lot about it and I'm really happy that I can continue my activism and I have support from people in the new country I live now. And also from abroad, <laughs> from other countries. Thank you. <laughs> and I really hope, I really hope that uh, one day we will all be able to come to maybe another general assembly in Belarus <laughs> when it will be free. <laughs> I can continue um, to add up uh, what's already said. I can be a bit of repetitive, but. CDN showed us there are many ways to support your communities. Like it, you, uh, before I was thinking, no, I cannot leave my country. It's like I should be there. Just today we had a conversation with Lucina, and um, I kind of expressed myself without censor and uh, self-judgment because I, 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 I knew she understands me. Uh, but it was CDN showed us there are many levels. You can be you can be um, a great help from abroad too. You can you can also uh, be functional <laughs> in your country or like our fight is global actually. Okay, we have local struggles, of course we we don't deny that. Uh, but what we are fighting, it's uh, we can fight from everywhere, and we can empower um, we can empower uh, our fellows or what? I don't know what to tell. I'm not a native speaker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you understood what I'm talking about. So we can we can get empowered, and we can empower. We can share the vision uh, with other people from anywhere. Uh, that's that's really good thing and um, and the confident thing uh, yeah like now I am sitting here talking to public um, I'm not afraid of telling what I am thinking uh, and that was CDN told us yeah your opinion is valuable so what you are thinking is uh, is really worth of sharing so don't be afraid and this is this is really important in this uh, world because what like it it gives you another political awareness that what we are thinking actually is valuable it's it shouldn't be like uh, like it shouldn't be approved by like bigger like authority or someone we are uh, we are valuable as Katya said I think yeah 
and what we are doing is valuable so even small steps like baby steps are really valuable in our communities so thanks CDN for giving this platform and thanks all the people contributed to CDN and who wants to be next so uh, CDN gave me that I think the first thing that came to my mind uh, also some kind of political basis of political ideology and you know then you are trying to like study it in the university or like exploring it okay like but how it uh, can be implemented in practice at a bit like uh, uncertain but now like uh, when you are starting to do in some project for example your development session on your participation in session or you're debating these people on some issues you are starting to gain this maturity political maturity at least in in um, frame of thoughts not only uh, like uh, practical skills and i uh, suppose it is very valuable and uh, we like as it, it was many times mentioned we have um, completely different experience many of us but uh, here we have this you no know, places for to touch kind of each other experience and to uh, to prove our uh, uh, political views or maybe in other hand just to like withdraw some of our thoughts but wow it, it's have no sense in reality and like you can you you meet other people you speak to them you you re you receive this political understanding and also something about tran transformation or kind of influence um I know this it is not from personal level but uh, from kind of city level um, like from my uh, uh, CDS also activities I al always try to take to bring something to my whole town uh, which is uh, now occupied by Russians army and uh, like uh, unfortunately I ca cannot return there but um, these times that we have this freedom and uh, we live under uh, democratic Ukrainian control, um, we uh, introduce, they have some local action, the CDN uh, granted us from this our local organization. And like you can imagine that uh, not uh, like kind of small for, in Ukrainian scale, so a small city, <laughs> maybe not so small for in other countries. And uh, it's a pretty conservative city, as it is not capital, it's even not the capital of a region, but in the city center, in uh, one of the main buildings of the city, we have the full, like the bigger, big, big exhibition about gender. And for me, it was like my small victory that gender topic now explaining my hometown that is pretty far away from our capital from Kiev or another like progressive like more progressive city but like CDN gave me this possibility to promote what I believe in like further and even such a like hidden place for <laughs> someone it like also like through this um, possibilities we can transport not only ourselves but also community and environment that is surrounding us and I think it's very very important mm, for me what CDN gives people is like mostly something about support and uh, like inspiration uh, most of you like elaborate a lot on support like how people can like be really supportive to each other and like also for me it worked pretty it, it like played a big role because uh, after full-scale invasion like I was like you you have nothing to think about you just like survive like I will survive or not Th that is like two 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 thoughts that you have but like Sometime, like some night, when I was like 
trying to sleep on this like improvised bed in basement. I was like, hmm, I have some internet, I can check some chats. And it was like the like unimaginable amount of su support from people. And I was like, oh, like people really care. And like, I felt valuable from like for, for, for the fight and for the things that are like we are fighting for as well. Uh, also about support, like we as, a, as an organization can like not be, can, no, can cannot like concentrate on everyone and everything. It, like, it's super sad, but we can do and we can ask our like our members and everyone to like. I if you need support, just text us. Just drop message to like anyone. I I I think like from office, from EC, from previous is previous ECs, like anyone will support because we all are on the same like same vibe. <laughs> and about inspiration, like just today's morning. Uh, I received a message from my friend. Uh, it's like I invited her to, to take part in the study session which we had this year in Budapest. Uh, and after CDN uh, uploaded stories when we were on the, this like Georgi protest, protests like close to Georgian embassy, she told me, "Oh, Jenya, you are the person who inspires me." And I was like, "No, no, it's not me. It's basically like organization. It's like we. It's like not about like only." one of me doing something. It's about like everyone and about cooperation and about like these these connections between between us that can re reinforce and give more power and more more things to think about and to do later. Yes, and to we can talk about CDM for like a day and make a whole whole study session about CDN in our 20 years and we can bring 100 people to share their experience and we're gonna let's do that yeah uh, but we have to move to closer to the finishing of our panel and then continue our discussion without camera um, but um, and the yeah the last question I would have um, but also feel free to not answer this question and say something different you feel like to say um, that you yeah, that you want to say and you want to be heard, um, is that where do you want to see CDN in the upcoming years, but not next year, two years, but like in a 20, ne next 20 years, where would you want to see us being? Um, and yeah. Maybe I can start just the short, it's not like only about CDN, it, for me it's, it's about like youth of Eastern Europe. In like few years, I see youth of Eastern Europe as powerful as like any any other like this progressive democratic country. Like we have space to 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 make ourselves uh, ourselves better. Like we have things to not only to fight for, but we have things to fight against. So we have a lot to do, and I hope CDN will overcome and do everything that I is in our like power to become better and to cover more countries and make youth in Eastern Europe very ac active and very loud. I would love CDN to be more political. I will start from the background that in 2021, uh, it was already after like mass protests protest started in Belarus. I felt super bad mentally, like I felt that nothing is working and I already had my uncle imprisoned and like completely no future in my eyes and in my head. And in 2022 I was already, uh, 22, I was already living in Latvia and I was feeling that I'm kind of like I didn't know what to do at the beginning of the year and then the war started and uh, I mean the f full scale I don't know how to say it in English but you understood me and um, yeah I was like even asking people around uh, what am I doing what's the purpose of the things that I'm doing because you know like I've been active since 2016 and now we have war and we have uh, bombs flying from my country I was like I, I've, I felt that like nothing works at all 
Uh, after that, in a few months, I got a job in Belarusian NGO, which is like an environmental NGO. And a few months later, we became an extremist organization and b because we did some really nice things. And I realized that something works. <laughs> I can do something. And I started to feel better. But I was having discussions with Masha. I didn't participate m much in some things because I didn't feel that something gives uh, like some impact on the situation in Belarus or just the situation in our region. So I realized that I really want CDN to be more political, to have its influence. I mean, of, of course, it's really hard to have influence on something like Belarusian regime. <laughs> but, you know, I, I still have an idea, I still have hope that uh, we can be super powerful <laughs> and we can shake dictators and dictatorships a lot and hopefully break them. <laughs> um, yeah, I love the shared experiences and um, yeah, everybody feeling safe to tell uh, what they feel about questions. And I wanna add that um, three small things popped up in my mind. Uh, first of all, I, I would really love to see CDN in 20 years supporting people who are run, young people who are running for elections in the Eastern Europe um, <laughs> instead of <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so, um, so I would really love the movement to to be in that uh, place where people are actually able to run for elections, and then there is a space for that in their country. Secondly, uh, maybe like, uh, it might sound a bit cheesy, but like some events in Azerbaijan and Armenia where both countries can participate in each other's countries finally. Um, we're, we need to we're talking about 20 years, it might be possible. Uh, and then the last year's like, last thing, uh, maybe <coughs> having member organizations that CDN have always been wanting to have some other Eastern European countries that are not represented in CDN. So like to have a full map, full picture of Eastern Europe where there's a very connected network of uh, green movement and green initiatives and organizations. And yeah, so those three things. Anyone else wants, yeah. Um, thank you for sharing. Um, well, I want in 2050 and many, uh, like 100 years after CDN to uh, connect people to dream together, to fight together, to stand firm in the beliefs that we have and always never lose hope, to be guided with the emotions, whatever we feel, anger, hope, whatever they are, just to drive and bring the change we want to see. Yeah, sounded too abstract, but I hope it's gonna like guide us throughout our, not activism. Yeah, I want to see CDN. Uh, this might sound a bit uh, strange, but I want to see it uh, stronger, uh, but not necessarily, um, so widespread because this uh, family spirit and uh, safe space that we have um, even if like when it grows it's uh, difficult to maintain and i would like to see this uh, like for me it's been safe space for years and i want this to continue and in 20 years whatever comes um, i want this uh, i hope that this uh, this network will preserve its uh, like the atmosphere and the, the good vibes all day. Uh, yeah, very nice visions. Uh, <laughs> how to add something that's also relevant. Um, yeah, when I'm thinking about CDN, I'm thinking about this kind of group of people usually that come together. It's difficult to think of CDN as some organization like an NGO. Um, so. I would like to imagine that, yeah, in some years from now, maybe 2040 is not too ambitious. We have another GA. Uh, at today's GA, there was uh, Terry Ranke saying, uh, a German politician, saying how CDN was kind of one of her first green experiences. It got her to where she is. I hope that uh, at some CDN General Assembly in the future, we have a lot of Eastern European politicians, CDN alumni, 
who uh, who got elected, who are uh, yeah leading very progressive governments. Um, but also at this GA, yeah, I hope that there are people who are very passionate and still driven. I really like this point, but uh, who are also functioning in not perfect environments, but safe environments also where they don't need to you know, fear persecution and oppression. That's my wish and hope. <laughs> Um, if you are dreaming, let's dream big. <laughs> I mean, um, I hope and I would like to see CDN to have uh, that strong, like so strong that office have uh, better working conditions and they are not dependent on uh, funds and I mean any external sources that CDN is self-sustainable and the people in CDN that very empowered that um, uh, they are fighting without losing themselves in this world. So, I mean, it sounds a bit topic, but why not? Let's dream big. <laughs> and uh, one more, I'm adding that people are so empowered, they are not turn out in between uh, imperialist interests they are like they are um, they are deciding their own futures without uh, staying under influence of uh, imperialist interests because they are powerful and because they have now power so I hope city and and city and people will be more powerful than those uh, imperialists uh, uh, structures, yeah. So, as it, it was already many times mentioned that I just really, really want CDN be um, even more politicized than we have it now. So it is good that we have, like we already started this process. But unfortunately, it was, uh, I think, much influenced by the war, but uh, what we like can do now, I think then more we will be into politics, then less we will be uh, worse in future, so let's do it together. So my also big dream, it's uh, that the CDN uh, like will have kind of more competition inside, for example, more uh, people, uh, candidates for executive committee or competition to become a member organization, Compe com more competition to uh, be uh, our like, participant in our events. So I want to be like that we will have more people, that our community will be much more development and uh, our people that are inside this uh, community will be more motivated to take responsibility to also take more active part in uh, CDN's life and contribute to its development more and more, not only by visiting our events, but also for doing something and to like, contribute much more time to it. Also, I wish very much that CDN have more capacities than we have now. It's starting from the office, like uh, for new position or for office to uh, have less stress on office people, to have uh, more development um, executive committee than EC could uh, care about uh, much different various stuff than we have it now. Um, and after that, I and I believe in, like I hope in the short future we will have more capacities in office. I I want CDN to try new activities. Like we already started a bit, uh, for example, writing statements or to making uh, some conferences or to writing uh, interesting publication that's something new that like different that they had it before. But uh, it also contributed uh, much efforts and. Uh, 
I wish we have we could uh, continue this and increase uh, such quality work, but without uh, such trash and without burnout of people who are responsible for this. Um, also, my my personal pain it's CDN visual identity <laughs> <laughs> and and CDN website. <laughs> so I hope in future but it is not like i hope in very very short future we will have a very beautiful and uh, cute and user-friendly website this updated information but not this information this uh, 10 years old or even more <laughs> and and I really want that CDN people and uh, members of uh, EMOS and uh, EC especially, like uh, people who are responsible for decision making, uh, became more brave and more courage and do not avoid the that, that difficult topic. And we see that we already on that stage of development that we uh, pretty have a very good uh, base of uh, information and a political stance on kind of already regular issues like LGBT rights or gender or climate or like urbanism or something but uh, we see that uh, new topics and new burning each issues emerge like war security peace building like, and it is something new to us and we uh, like all do not know how to tackle it properly because we like we're all young and we like not every of us experience uh, the war before and do not know how to behave in this situation, how to speak about it without harming in other people and in other communities. So, and like in order to do not avoid this topic just because it's very sensitive, I hope we will have enough capacities to speak about it and to develop it and to develop our position. And of course, to start this process, is, it's demand some kind of brave and courage and I hope we will all have it to to work on it. Yes, I of course agree with everyone who said that we should become more political. I also think that um, what we need to work on and what I wish for us to work on is uh, for uh, kind of our structures and our MOs and everything to uh, be more sustainable and more self-sufficient because um, I, I I think that we need to start small and then we can build on that to make something bigger. And I also like a, a bigger dream of mine is that uh, we kind of, as Eastern Europeans, we stop defining ourselves th uh, uh, in comparison to Western Europe, but we develop kind of our own identity. We And by kind of through this, we can also show that democracy and human rights, this is not just something that we we are kind of copying from Western Europe as like, it's for everyone. And uh, these are these are kind of not values that, that we, that, that they have a monopoly on and we, we need to develop ourselves as uh, as ourselves, not just, uh, I think that goes also w in with the imperialism. Uh, but uh, yeah, and generally I, of course, w wish for uh, all of our local context to become easier and for us um, to be able to do bigger and uh, more amazing things. Amazing. <clears throat> I will also say, and we can finish our discussion with that. But before I say what I want to see in future, briefly I want to say thank you to all of you. And thank you. You mentioned that um, it's, it's CDN that is inspiring, and it's CDN as an organization. But what makes CDN is people. It's people from the very beginning, from 2000 to when the first idea was born up until right now, this each individual who has contributed, who has uh, worked, who has overworked some hours, what on any position there, there is, every contribution uh, they made to CDN and through CDN to the greening and stronger Eastern uh, Europe. So I would like to thank hundreds, thousands, Maybe if, if we're talking participants, maybe tens of thousands throughout these 20 years. It's a lot of people. Um, so 
Um, yeah, I would like to thank them for their very important contribution. And where do I want to see CDN or and the region in 20 years is, well, all of you said already, there's nothing much to, for me to add, but maybe I could repeat a few. I would really love to see more uh, CDN people running for elections, more CDN people supporting each other's on elections, more CDN people going to each other's elections and making endorsements and supporting each other and getting elected, bringing the change and being actively involved in the politics. In and but for those who are not, not don't want to do that, which is very fair to be able to influence the politics from outside as a non-governmental organizations which play a crucial role in shaping in politics. So I would like to see both of it continuing and becoming stronger and stronger. And with our green political family that we are part of, uh, European green political family, I would like to see CDN contributing to this strong, a sustainable green movement in Eastern Europe where, we, where all of these issues that are close to our heart are so relevant and it's going to get even more relevant with the climate crisis and a democracy crisis and a backlash on, on, on feminism and on the queer rights and yeah, things are very fragile. Everything that we fight for, we have to continue fighting for. So I would like to see the end to be there supporting, encouraging, capacity building, networking, and bringing the change that we all need. So, yes. And with this, we, on a positive note of a better Eastern European and European and the global future, um, we can continue, uh, we can finish our discussion and uh, yeah, continue informal part of talking about CDN and yeah, what, how we would it like to be shaped. Thank you for everyone.